Hello everybody and welcome back to my Roblox how-to series on everything that you need to know about how to make Roblox games. Today, we're going to be tackling three different services today. We're going to be talking about the starter pack, starter player, and teams. Since they're really short and simple to explain, so I don't need to put them all in individual videos. We can all just pack them into this one video. Um, we'll just go from the top and go down. We'll start with starter pack. The purpose of starter pack is for you to be able to parent an object to the player's backpack upon the player loading. So typically this would mean something like a tool. And even like if you went into the toolbox and I searched up sword and I clicked on it, it'll ask you if you want to put this tool in the starter pack. Because if I load up the game, then what's going to happen is that classic sword tool is going to be parented to my player's backpack so then I can equip it. And I can even look up um, my backpack in the workspace here, or in players, and you can see that if I unequip it, then it's right there. Classic sword. So that's the purpose of starter pack. Very simple. Usually, 99% of the time, you want to use it for tools, such as the sword, or maybe even like a rocket launcher or something like that. It doesn't have any properties that are worth talking about because there basically is nothing. Now, starter player. Starter player is going to be the longer segment of the three. But you can see that in starter player, we've split it up into two different folders. Starter character scripts and starter player scripts. Now I'll go over those in just a second. I first want to talk about the properties of starter player. Because there are quite a bit. And this is really good for customization in your game. So health display distance is how far does a player's health bar show from a different player so this is a hundred studs if you're less than 100 studs away from a player then you can see their health bar if it's not at full health same with the name display distance it does the exact same thing just with the player's name the camera max zoom distance is how far can you zoom out from your player and the minimum zoom distance is how far can you zoom into your player um, camera mode is just two different types, classic and lock-in first person. Lock-in first person would be for like a first person shooter, so then you can't really zoom in or out, which essentially makes these max and minimum zoom distance things obsolete if you do select that. Um, the developer camera occlusion mode doesn't do much these they just don't do much um, the character you might want to customize most of this the max slope angle is how steep of a platform can you climb up before your character won't let you so the highest it'll let you is an 89 degree angle and that's what this is saying let me go back to it 89 degrees is the steepest it'll let you, and anything above that, it probably won't let you. But you can change it to whatever you want. I don't know, you might be able to even change it to like 180 degrees. I keep losing it. Yeah, you can change it to 180 degrees. Then you can get some weird effects. The character walk speed is how fast does your character walk. You can mess around with this, like in the valley. I've cranked up the speed of the player for testing purposes to like 68 so you go really really fast or you can even change it to like 5 and make your character go extremely slow. User emotes enabled. That's just whether you can or cannot use emotes in the game. Jump height. It's like how I explained walk speed. It's just instead of how fast you run, it's how high do you jump. 
So if you want your player to jump really, really high, then you can set it really high. Or if you want them to not be able to jump, you can set it to zero. Stuff like that. Auto jump. You can enable or disable that. And that's pretty much all the important things in the starter player properties. So now let's go over the starter character and starter player scripts. So these two, they kind of do what it says they do. The starter character scripts will parent whatever scripts are inside of this folder, or just anything inside of this folder, it'll parent it to the player's character upon loading. And the player scripts, it'll parent it to their player instance in the player's um, service. It's like if I just had a script like that, I just called this banana, and then the player script, I had like a local script, and I called it chicken. Then you'll see that when I load into the game, banana is going to be inside of my player model in the workspace, but chicken is going to be parented to my player scripts inside of the players here. It's right here. These are default Roblox scripts that automatically load in, but chicken is here inside of my player scripts. And then if I go to my model right here in the workspace, you can see banana is right there. So that's super useful if you want to change properties of the player model or if you want to change certain properties of the player instance, you can do stuff like that. And you can also parent other things to these. It's not exclusively scripts, but I'm not going to get into that because then that gets a little bit more complicated. Finally, let's talk about a really short one, teams. With teams... You can just insert a team instance. I did that by just clicking on the plus, searching up team. Right there. And then you can customize the team. Auto assignable. So if this is the default team when you load into the game. And you can call whatever you want. I can call it um, bread. Something like that. And then I can change the team color to maybe like toothpaste. And when I load into the game, since I have it auto assignable, then I will automatically be assigned to the bread team. See that right there. And I can continue to add more teams if I want to. Like I can add a I don't know, corn and I can add a tomato. There I go. Can add a tomato team and a corn team. Make this red. And make this yellow. And I can boot up the game and it's gonna assign me to one of them. It says I have them all assignable. It's gonna just do one of the three. But this can be customized in scripts as well. So if I went to a local script, if I just went into like starter player scripts, add a local script, then I can do game dot players dot local player dot team, and I can set it equal to game dot teams dot whatever, like tomato. If I wanted that, then I would set the players team to be tomato so even though bread is the auto assignable team I'm gonna turn auto assignable off for the other two it's going to override that and it's going to put me on the tomato team since I had that script do that certain function see right there tomato this can be useful for like different team based games obviously since it's called well teams where you can have, you know, different teams going against each other and maybe like a shootout or like a capture the flag, that kind of thing. It's just a way to be able to 
assign people different ranks or different positions in a game. But that's basically it for this video. We went over starter pack, starter player, and teams all in one video. It's pretty simple. Not anything crazy. And I hope you enjoyed this video. Please subscribe if you did. And join my Discord server where you can get updates on how videos are going and where the progress on the valley is too. Again, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.